We touched on negative relationships in the last example, but we want to kind of explore the different types of relationships that are available to us for bivariate data. So we saw a negative relationship, right? So as x increases, as we move to the right on the graph, the y decreases. That's a negative linear relationship. You could also have a positive linear relationship, which means as x increases, right, as we move to the right on the graph, so remember, this down here is the x, right, axis, and then this vertical bit is the y-axis, right, right there. So as x increases, the y increases. So as we move to the right, the y goes up. So for example, let's say we want this to be life expectancy. And we use it for both of them, actually. So if I want my life expectancy to go up, I need a variable that I could increase. So if I increase this variable, my life expectancy will go up. It will increase. Well, um, money. <laughs> money generally is one of those things. So GDP, which is the gross domestic product, it's a measurement of how much stuff your country makes. So um, gross domestic product. It's an economics thing. So domestic meaning you make it in within your country, right? Product meaning it's stuff you produce. Gross doesn't mean like, oh, that's gross. It means um, taken together. I want a gross of things. Um, another word for it would be total. So if you want the total domestic product, it's kind of a more old-fashioned word for total. So if you've ever heard of your gross income, that's what that's talking about. It's your total income. All right, so if a country is wealthier, it has higher life expectancy. Makes sense, right? So this is a measurement of the wealth of a country. So the larger it is, the larger the life expectancy. All right, what about over here? Um, well, we already saw births per woman. Let's try to do something different. What about child mortality? So child mortality is a measurement of um, how many of, usually it's infants between the ages of um, zero and five, actually. So I guess not infants, infants to toddlers. Um, how many of them die before the age of five? So mortality is in death, right? Mort is Latin for death. So it's saying, you know, the more child mortality, the more infant and child death you have in your country, the lower your life expectancy is going to be. That seems perfectly reasonable, <laughs> right? That we would expect that. But you could also do births per woman, right? We just saw that. If fertility rate is higher, life expectancy tends to be lower. All right, now those are the two that we're going to work with. We're particularly interested in negative linear and positive linear, which also, by the way, is called inverse. It's an inverse relationship, which is negative linear, and positive linear, which is called a direct relationship. So those are just other, other terms for it. Those are the ones we're going to focus on. There are other kinds of relationships that would be tackled in, say, a STATS 2 course. Um, those would be quadratic, right? It goes up and goes back down. Exponential, which is curved, which means it's, it's growing faster and faster, which is very scary. So, for example, time here, say, in days, and then this would be COVID-19 infections. Because that was growing exponentially, as most viruses do, actually. Um, there's also the possibility of no correlation. This one we will see. So these two we're not going to really work with. But suffice to say, they exist. Um, and you would study them in another course. This is when it's no relationship at all. So you just have, you know, basically it looks like the points were thrown up there, <laughs> scattered, right? So if that's the case... Um, you need two variables that don't have anything to do with each other. So let me do life expectancy again. And I would need a measurement for a country, expectancy, there we go, a measurement for the country that would have no bearing on it. So I'm going to say the number of Tom Cruise fans in that country, right? So the number of Tom Cruise fans in the country really should have no bearing on the life expectancy for that country. I just, I just picked Tom Cruise. Pick, pick your favorite, you know, actor that you want to make fun of or pick on. <laughs> so there you go. It has no relationship at all. Now, nonlinear, that's these ones. These are nonlinear. There's a relationship, but they're not a line. And no relation are not the same thing. 
So a no relation, no correlation, no relationship is this one. This one is no relation or no correlation. Oops, sorry, I should switch out of the highlighter at that point. So no relation, no correlation, nothing. Right. Nonlinear relationships are relationships. They're just not relationships we're going to deal with. Right. Those would be the two that are up above. Right. Those two up there are nonlinear relationships. This one's a curve, and this one's a curve. They're curving. They're not linear. Right. So there's a pattern, but the pattern is not a line. And the lines are the only patterns we are particularly interested in. Well, let's put that together with this bit right here. Um, we want to type tie together strength of a relationship. So we know we're looking for linear, right? So that's the most important one for our course. So we want to figure out whether or not we think these are positive or negative. That'll be the direction of the relationship. But also how strong they are. Are they perfect? Because that's the best one. Or are they strong, which would be really good, moderate, and then weak, which is not really good at all, right? So that's what we're trying to figure out. All right. So perfect ones are the best ones. So if you look at the graphs on the page, this one right here and this one right here are perfect. All the dots are in a row. It's perfect, perfect, perfect. Looks a lot like an algebra class, right? Because that's the way algebra class works. So this is a perfect negative. We're not going to get to work with perfect ones very often. Um, they're just kind of a theory for us because real life is messy. So real life does not work perfectly. Algebra class works perfectly. <laughs> All right, so that's a perfect negative relationship and a perfect positive relationship. Okay? Because positive, because it's increasing as, as you move to the right, x goes up. As you move to the right, or excuse me, as you move to the right, y goes up, excuse me. As you move to the right, y goes down. As a matter of fact, I can mention that back here, right? right? So positive means as x goes up, y goes up, right? X going up, by the way, means you're moving to the right, right? So as you move to the right, Y goes up. So I guess if you like, you could you could give yourself a little right arrow, right? So as X goes up, which means you're moving to the right, Y goes up, you're moving up. This one means as X goes up, right? So you're moving to the right, Y goes down, right? All right, so as X goes up, Y goes down. This is negative. As X goes up, Y goes up positive. All right, well, that should mean that these are pretty easy to figure out. I mean, this is negative, this is positive, because we can see it has those same trends. Ah, but how strong are they? Well, you can really see the line. You can envision it on this one. You can see all those points are really tightly clustered around that line, which means this is a strong relationship here. And here, that one's probably also strong, but maybe I mean, it's a little more scattered away from that line. So I guess we could say moderate on this side. Hmm. And then this one looks like no relationship at all, <laughs> right? Um, very, very weak, possibly no relation. It has a little bit of negativity going with it. Um, so maybe a weak negative. But it's also, I mean, it's a really bad one. So probably no relation. It's probably just too terrible. This one, on the other hand, you can see the positive trend, but it's a weak positive. Now, the thing is that mathematicians don't like this whole guesswork thing. So if you're looking at that going, well, how would I know if it's strong or if it's moderate? How would I get that? Good question, right? Because mathematicians don't like looking at it and guessing, right? That's just, that doesn't seem mathematical. So we want a way to measure that. We want a number that will tell us whether it's strong, moderate, or weak without this whole guesswork from a scatter diagram. That we don't like. So we want a way to measure it, which will be a number that will tell us if the relationship
is you know perfect, strong, moderate or weak. And that number has a name. It's called the correlation coefficient. R. And that's what we'll work on. We want to know what R is and how it tells us whether it's strong or positive or moderate. And we'll see that on the next page. But for right now, just realize that R is going to be able to tell us without us having to guess whether this is in fact strong or if it's moderate. That correlation coefficient, that number, will be able to tell us strong, moderate, and weak and all of that stuff. It'll actually also tell us direction, positive or negative as well. So won't that be nice? And then you won't have to wonder about this bottom one, whether it's positive or negative, because R will tell us.